Hello there, my name is the Bread Pirate, but everybody calls me Bread. Today, I want to talk to you about the person that convinced me to be a Zelda YouTuber. With more than 84 million views and half a million subscribers, there is little doubt that he's become one of the most influential members of the community. His videos are beloved by many, and his theories are some of the most polished on YouTube. His real name is Ed King, but you probably know him by a different title. Today, we'll be exploring the legend of Zeltic. Ed started his YouTube career not with Zelda, but with Machinima's about the fantasy MMORPG RuneScape. In fact, in 2014, Woober, as he was called at the time, won a contest for making a Christmas login screen, one which is still in use today. But Woober's RuneScape videos didn't get much attention. Around 2014, he moved on to Super Smash Bros. content, but that didn't get off the ground either. It wasn't until January 28th of 2015 that he found his niche. Inspired by channels like the Commonwealth Realm, HMK, and McIntyre Productions, Ed created a channel dedicated to speculation on an unreleased Nintendo game, which would eventually be known as The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The channel was called Zeltic. Ironically, Ed didn't come up with the name. The name Zeltic was invented when his mate was making a RuneScape account. It went a little bit like this. Hmm. Ooh, I got it! Zelda. That's a cool name. Yeah, that's a girl's name. You can't call yourself Zelda. Zelda's a girl? So his friend invented the name Zeltic, and nine years later, Ed borrowed the name for his channel. Zeltic's first video was released two months later, on March 4th. It was called How Multiplayer Could Work in Zelda U. This is a good time to mention that Breath of the Wild's name was not revealed until the summer of 2016, so fans used two names when describing the sequel. Zelda U, because the game was being made for the Wii U, and Zelda NX, which was the codename for the Nintendo Switch before its name was revealed. The video itself was simple and the microphone quality left something to be desired. However, Zeltic rapidly improved his video quality throughout March of that year. In his next video, his narration was smoother. In his third, his microphone quality improved and he added an intro. And by his seventh video, he had already ditched his first intro and made a slicker, more professional one. The Mad Lad even unlisted his most popular video at the time so that he could redo it and make it better. In a single month, his videos went from unscripted and barely edited to pretty well polished. At the same time, Ed went from zero to 200 subscribers, started getting shoutouts by Zelda Informer, and began collaborating with YouTubers like Game Over Jesse and McIntyre Productions. Then, on July 11th, 2015, he hit 1,000 subscribers. Things were going great! So obviously, he disappeared for five months. It wasn't until November that Zeltic returned, but when he did, it was in full force because of a new Zelda U teaser. A full, glorious, 13 second teaser. But that was all he needed. Zeltic psychoanalyzed the potatoes out of those 13 seconds. A day after the teaser, he made a three minute video about it. And the day after that, he uploaded a 19 minute discussion video with the Commonwealth Realm. As we'll soon see, these Sonic the Hedgehog talents are what gave his channel its boost in its earliest days. Following the teaser, Zeltic started two series. Zelda Focus, and things Zelda you could learn from X Zelda games. Zelda Focus was a little more speculative. In each episode, he took five minutes to discuss a single element about Zelda U, such as Epona, the blue tunic, or how Twilight Princess textures related to the plot of Zelda U. <coughs> Actually, on second thought, maybe saying it was a little speculative was an understatement. In the second series, he talked about things he would like to see in Zelda U, which were present in previous games. This is when Zeltic's channel really started resembling the quality we see nowadays. From his iconic nighttime Hyrule introduction, to smaller things like the moving Triforce background that he uses in his top fives. This is what I subscribed. But then something even bigger than that happened. Zeltic uploaded his first genuine Zelda theory. In the past he had done theories about Zelda U, but they were practically speculation videos considering how little information was known about the game. On the other hand, this Ganondorf video was based on established lore. The video, which was a collaboration with the Commonwealth Realm, did much better than his previous speculation content. And as a result, Zeltic gained more than 775 subs in the span of 10 days. However, he didn't stick with Zelda theories yet. For the next few months of 2016, Zeltic kept pumping out speculation content while dabbling in a few other areas. For instance, he started an Ocarina of Time playthrough, experimented with live streaming, and uploaded a Super Smash Bros. video. This is also when the Chamber of Sages went public, a multi-channel collaboration between the Commonwealth Realm, Dr. Wily, Game Over Jesse, Zelda Master, and Zeltic. The goal was for members to help each other with videos while running a collaborative channel called the Chamber of Sages. 
That's why Zeltic's 2016 videos often had this intro. Unfortunately, the collaboration fell through due to the workload involved, and by June, Zeltic had dropped the intro from his videos. Speaking of which, June is when he hit 10,000 subscribers, although it wouldn't stay that way for much longer. Four days later, on June 14th, 2016, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was finally revealed, and with it came an insane amount of speculation. Over the course of the reveal, which lasted three days, Zeltic worked tirelessly to upload as many videos as humanely possible. Reactions, timeline theories, top fives, and general speculation videos came one after another. When it was finished, he had uploaded eight videos over the course of only nine days. One of these videos in particular, five Breath of the Wild Easter eggs slash references, went on to earn more than a million views, making it his sixth most popular video ever. Not bad considering he made it in a single day and before anyone was able to play the game. But holy carp, this paid off. In a single month, he doubled the size of his channel, reaching 20,000 subscribers. He was earning subscribers faster than any Zeltuber before him, and Breath of the Wild was right around the corner. All he needed to do was stay consistent. So obviously, he disappeared for four weeks. What? Did you expect something different? The man just went on a video making rampage. Let him catch his breath. After the break, Zeltic continued with speculation content. The hype for the latest Zelda game seemed unstoppable, and this only boosted his channel more. By January, he was already at 40,000 subs. And then, on March 3rd of 2017, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild released. Zeltic had been making videos for 23 months, almost a full two years, and all of it was for this moment. And he did not spoil the opportunity. Using his sonic speed, he made four videos within a week, all of them doing pretty well. He had reached the finish line, the end of his quest. His purpose in life had been completed. So obviously, he took a much deserved month long break to appreciate the game. And all was well. But then, it wasn't. When Ed returned to the channel, he ran into a problem. The point of his videos were to speculate about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But what do you speculate on when the game is fully revealed? The channel needed a new purpose. For months, Zeltic experimented with various topics, ranging from Breath of the Wild DLC analysis to Mario Odyssey tips and even a Zelda Let's Play. His videos during this time were doing all right, but his channel wasn't growing nearly as fast as before. Whereas he used to get 10,000 subscribers a month, now he was barely getting 1,000. Yet, believe it or not, something much worse was happening behind the scenes. Zeltic didn't enjoy making videos anymore. In the past, it was fun for him, a hobby project, but now he was forcing himself to make videos. As a result, his upload schedule became less and less frequent. So with the channel stuck in a rut, no motivation, and no new Zelda game on the horizon, it seemed like things were going to take a turn for the worst. But then, this happened. A year after Breath of the Wild's release, in March of 2018, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was announced. Zeltic was a hardcore Smash fan, and if you'll recall, he was making videos about it well before he was making Zelda content. This was his chance to shine. And shine he did. His first Smash video on the channel, uploaded on March 13th, 2018, speculated on what Link's moveset would be in the new game. Unfortunately, most of his ideas didn't come to fruition, but that hardly mattered. Zeltic was back, baby! For the next few months, Ed worked on Zelda content alongside Super Smash Bros. content, and for a time, it was the best of both worlds. Speculation, Smash Bros, and Zelda all on one channel. But it wasn't meant to last. As Ed soon discovered, the majority of his fans weren't interested in his Super Smash Bros content, unless it was linked to the Legend of Zelda series. His first few Smash videos did amazing, but after that, they started getting fewer and fewer views. The situation really came to a head on November 17th, 2018, when he uploaded the video, Smash Bros Most Terrifying Item, a physics theory about the black hole item from Super Smash Bros Ultimate. The video was received generally well by the people who saw it, but the problem was, nobody saw it. As a result, Zeltic unlisted the video, making it almost impossible to watch. Almost. I might have included a secret link to it in the description. Don't tell him I said that. The final nail in the Smash coffin came that October, when his Legend of Zelda content jumped in popularity. Subscribers began to pour in again, and two of the videos from this month went on to be in his top 10 most popular videos ever. But he wasn't quite done yet. 
he decided to release one more Smash video, a Ganondorf combat montage. The footage was impressive, but compared to all his other content, got hardly any views. So Smash finally went out the window. Since then, Zeltic has only ever uploaded Zelda content. A few months after leaving behind his Smash content, on January 23rd, 2019, Zeltic hit the huge milestone of 100,000 subscribers. Every single video since then has gotten just as many views. The next month, on February 24th, he uploaded his most popular video ever. Which Link is the strongest? A video which compared the strength, equipment, skills, and experience of each Link in the Zelda timeline to see which is strongest. Today, the video sits just under 4 million views. Then, on June 11th, 2019, the sequel to Breath of the Wild was revealed, which led to a string of speculation videos on the channel, which went well into the summer. However, instead of focusing solely on speculation, Ed continued to make other types of Zelda content, such as theories, top 5 or top 10 rankings, and eventually, Easter egg compilations. By the end of 2019, he had reached 300,000 subscribers. This begs the question, what is it about his videos that made them so successful? I think we can pin a few things down. On a surface level, he's professional. His editing is smooth, yet not overdone, and he has a great voice for it. But we can go deeper than that. Zeltic is a master in the art of storytelling. Any Joe Schmo can make a top 10 list or spit out facts that prove a theory, but it takes much more talent to tell a good story. And that goes a long way to getting people invested in his videos. On top of that, his theory videos are incredibly sound, which is rooted in the way he goes about his research. Instead of starting with a conclusion and finding clues to back that up, Ed starts with a question. For instance, what are the aliens in Majora's Mask? Or how do ancient arrows work? Then, after doing his research, he tries to come to a logical conclusion. This makes his theories highly convincing and gives people one more reason to watch his content. Then last, but clearly not least, Zeltic puts an insane amount of work into his thumbnails. They're eye-catching, but simple to understand and succeed at making people curious. And if you can make people curious, then you can get them to watch your video. All of this together contributed to his success as a YouTuber. So by the end of 2019, Zeltic finally became a full-time content creator. It was about this time that a dreadful virus hit the world stage and forced everyone indoors. So Zeltic took advantage of this and returned to an old love of his, RuneScape. This became his creative outlet in the spring of 2020 with a channel called Wizard's Mind Bomb. He uploaded a total of five videos to the channel, each ranging from 1,000 to 4,000 views. However, due to its lukewarm response, he ended the series in May of 2020. The channel has had no uploads since. When Age of Calamity released in the fall of 2020, he jumped on the bandwagon and released two of his chunkiest videos to date, an Age of Calamity story analysis and a 50 minute long theory about which Age of Calamity champion is the strongest. Obviously, he needed a break. And finally, he took one. Nowadays, Ed still keeps himself busy with ranking videos, Zelda theories, and when there is news about a new game, speculation. According to Social Blade, Zeltic is slated to become the largest Zelda theorist by the summer, and in the future, it's entirely possible he'll become the largest Zelda YouTuber ever. But until then, that's a secret to everybody. Hey there! Normally this is when the video ends, but I had a lot of fun facts about Zeltic that I wanted to share, but I just couldn't fit into the main section of the video. So, here we are! Ed's first Zelda game was Ocarina of Time, although he couldn't get past the second dungeon in the game because it was so scary. His second Zelda game, which was The Wind Waker, became his favorite 3D Zelda game. However, his favorite 2D Zelda game is The Minish Cap. His old username, Woober, doesn't mean anything. But it's still really funny. Zeltic used to record his videos in his garage and car because he thought it made his audio sound better. Zeltic's editing software is Sony Vegas. And lastly, the current outro used in his videos was composed by his younger brother. Well. That's all I got. Until I see you next time. Have fun storming the castle. Goodbye.